Greetings, Mother Lighters, my name is Sam, and today we're here to talk about another young webhead we've not mentioned much before, but now it's time, as he's more than made his mark on pop culture. Yes, it's the venomous and sometimes invisible Spidey full of exaggerated swagger, Miles Morales. With his own movie and a game, he's more than qualified for a 101-ing, frankly. But which Hollywood A-lister was the one who pushed for this new Spider-Man? What does being zapped like that feel like? And when are they going to make a superhero that's a geeky man-child from the UK? I'd be a shoe in for that. Two out of three of those questions are going to be answered, so grab your cats and backpacks, prepare those venom powers, and get ready for 101 facts about Spider-Man, Miles Morales. Number one. Okay, let's do this one more time. Miles Morales was bitten by a radioactive spider, and at least in some universes, he is the one and only Spider-Man. In case you don't know the rest, don't worry, we've got 100 facts to go. Number two. The idea for a black Spider-Man came about when Donald Glover auditioned for the Amazing Spider-Man movies. Of course, any webheads among you will know that Andrew Garfield was cast as the worst on-screen Spider-Man, but Glover wasn't finished yet. Number three. The campaign for Glover to become Spider-Man went viral on Twitter, even gaining support from Spidey creator himself, Stan Lee. As a response to the campaign in an episode of Community, as you can see in this scene, Donald Glover's character Troy appeared dressed in Spider-Man pajamas. Number four. Eventually, this caught the attention of Brian Michael Bendis, the writer of many Marvel comics, but notably some of the Ultimate comic book series. He, alongside artist Sarah Pacelli, created Miles as the new Ultimate Spider-Man. Number 5. In the Disney Plus documentary Marvel's Behind the Mask, creator Bendis noted that in the origin of Spider-Man, his race is never specified. He's just a dorky kid from New York City that lives with his aunt. And he said if they were making him today, he'd be a kid of colour with a different voice. And so, well, that's what they did. Number 6. Miles' debut was in the fourth issue of the Ultimate Fallout comic book series, which follows the, well, fallout of the death of Peter Parker Spidey. In that Disney Plus documentary, Bendis also says that Miles is inspired by Peter the same way that Peter was inspired by his Uncle Ben, taking on a whole different meaning of, with great power comes great responsibility. Number 7. Now the movie version of Miles Morales' origin is pretty similar. As we can see in this scene, prior to the death of Pete, Miles is bitten by a radioactive spider. When Parker dies at the hands of Green Goblin, like here in the movie, Miles is wrecked with guilt and feels like he could have helped him and saved him. Number 8. In the Ultimate Comic Spider-Man series, the spider crawls out of his Uncle Aaron's bag while visiting his apartment. It's not some weird glitchy spider in the sewers. Number 9. The spider is marked with the number 42. Now from the comics, that spider is from Osborne Industries, and in the Spider-Verse movie, the spider comes from Alchemax. The number 42 is a reference to The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, where 42 is the meaning of life. We reference it here every single week. Number 10. Bendis has also noted that 42 is also significant as the jersey number of the first black player in the Major League Baseball, Jackie Robinson. He's also famed as being the player to break the colour barrier in baseball, which I'm sure you can agree bears significance to Miles. Number 11. Do -ba -do -ba -do -ba -do -ba -ba -do. Following issue 4 of Ultimate Fallout, Miles had his first comic book series debut in September 2011 under the name Ultimate Comic Spider-Man issue number 1. The series finished on October 2013 with issue 28. Number 12. Miles would get another comic book series in Miles Morales' Ultimate Spider-Man issue number 1 in July of 2014. Number 13. The introduction of Miles' Spider-Man was met with a lot of resistance and mixed reaction from fans and press alike. Whilst many believe that seeing a Spider-Man that has both black and Latino heritage was incredible and the next logical step for the character, others saw it as a move of political correctness and nothing more than a publicity stunt. Number 15. Although Miles is the first black Spider-Man, he's not the first Spider-Man of Latino descent. That title goes to Miguel O'Hara, who held the mantle of Spider-Man in the 1990s comic book series Spider-Man 2099, which started with this issue, Spider-Man 2099 issue number 1. Number 15. Miles' powers, as displayed here by the game of which we will talk about shortly. For a start, he can turn invisible, which I'm sure Peter would have loved to have done on some occasions. Some real spiders can actually camouflage themselves, so that's not as random as you might think. Number 16. Then there's the Venom Shocks, which are not to be confused with the big black gooey guy. This operates like electricity, but is inspired by how actual spiders sting people with their venom. Number 17. Oh, and by the way, Brian Michael Bendis compares the pain felt by victims of a venom zap to a swift kick in the nads. So, now you know. You're welcome. Number 18. Sounds a bit unfair to Peter so far, but here's something that evens the odds a little bit. Miles has got spidey sense, but it's the awkward combo of being both slower and weaker than Peter's. <laughs> Watch out, Miles. Number 19. By the way, Miles' middle name is Gonzalo, which really is a superpower in its own right. Number 20. 
Miles has his television debut in the third season of animated series Ultimate Spider-Man in 2015. During the Spider-Verse story arc, Peter Parker Spidey meets Miles, voiced by Donald Glover. Number 21. Just two years later, Glover reappears in the world of Spider-Man in Spider-Man Homecoming. This time, however, he wasn't Miles, but he was playing Miles' uncle, Aaron Davis, also known as the Prowler. Number 2200. According to John Watts, the co-writer and director of Homecoming, had Glover refused to play Aaron Davis in Spider-Man Homecoming, Davis would have been scrapped entirely from the film. Number 23. Miles is actually called by name in a deleted scene, but that's the closest we've gotten to an MCU Miles. At least so far. Lord of the MCU, Kevin Feige said in an interview that whilst he wouldn't be featured in the MCU in the foreseeable future, he was interested in opportunities to explore his character, so never say never, especially with that potential MCU multiverse. I wonder how well this fact will age. Number 24. Oh hey, speaking of a multiverse, one year after Homecoming, Sony Pictures Animation and Columbia Pictures released Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, also known as one of the best Spider-Man movies ever made. Number 25. The Spider-Verse idea is extremely loosely based on the Spider-Verse comic book series that ran from November 2014 to 2015, which featured many different Spider-Man variations that you can see in Into the Spider-Verse. For example, Spider-Gwen, as seen here, and Spider-Man 2099, who you can see here in a cheeky little post credit scene. Number 26. In Into the Spider-Verse, however, as seen here in the multiple introduction scenes, there are other Spideys alongside Miles, like Peter B. Parker's Spider-Man, Gwen Stacy's Spider-Woman, Penny Parker, Spider-Man Noir, and Spider-Ham. Number 27. All three live-action Spideys were due to make cameos in the movie, but they were ultimately cut so it wasn't too confusing, especially as Holland Spider-Man had just been snapped by everyone's favourite thick purple daddy Thanos. Oh, that made me feel sick to read out a little bit. Number 28. That being said, we get plenty of Spidey references to fangirl over, such as this scene where the original Peter Parker Spider-Man does the infamous Spider-Man dance that Tobey Maguire does in Spider-Man 3. Number 29. And of course in this sequence we also see some other classic moments from Maguire's Spider-Man trilogy, including the upside down kiss with Mary Jane and the iconic train stopping moment. Number 30. Donald Glover makes another little cameo appearance in this movie too. Remember I told you about that community bit where Troy's wearing Spidey pyjamas? Well, when Miles arrives at his Uncle Aaron's house, you can see an animated version of this clip playing on the TV in the background. See? Number 31. We don't see much of him in Spider-Verse, but Miles' best friend is Ganky Lee, a Korean-American fellow student. He didn't have much of a role in the animated movie, especially compared to the PlayStation game. This is because in the MCU Spidey films, Holland's Spidey sidekick Ned basically is Ganky. Number 32. Of course, the animation style of Spider-Verse is incredibly unique. Unlike other current animation films that animate across every single frame, as you can see here, Spider-Verse often left animations for two frames, making it feel, as the producers described, crunchy. Number 33. The on-ones and on-twos approach, depending whether actions lasted one or two frames, were used depending on what the circumstance of the scene was. For instance, as you can see here in this early scene from the movie, double frames were often used when Miles was clumsy or inexperienced, compared to this more fluid action scene later on, where singles were used to make him look more fluid, flawless, and, well, you know, superhero-y. Number 34. Also, unlike other animated movies, this one doesn't use traditional motion blur, instead opting for a smear effect or having multiple limbs in order to allude to movement. You can best see this if we slow down this scene here, in the Parker household. It's really very clever and gives it that moving comic book feeling that makes it unique and loved. Number 35. Co-director Phil Lord said they wanted it to be illustrated like a comic book, so that you could freeze it at any given moment and it would look like a comic panel. Alongside hand-drawn comic-style frames, 2D imagery and comic-style misprinting, like dots and lines, as you can see here, helped to cement the look. Number 36. Spider-Verse had 177 animators working on it, more than double the standard animated movie. It also took way longer to make, with one 10 second segment taking a whole year for them to be happy with. They were perfectionists, but I thank them for it. Number 37. Let's get a bit deeper into some easter eggs, shall we? Head first into the Yoki goodness. In this scene, when Miles gets his phone out and starts scrolling through his contacts, he has some recognisable names saved. First of all, we can see B. Bendis and Sarah Pacelli, the names of Miles' original creators. You can also see D. Slot, also known as Dan Slot, who created the Spider-Verse, as well as Jason Reynolds, who wrote the Miles Morales novel. Number 38. When we see Miles' dad's phone in this scene, you might spot T. McFarlane, also known as Todd McFarlane, one of the biggest artists for the Amazing Spider-Man series, as well as S. Ditko, better known as Steve Ditko, the co-creator of Spider-Man. Number 39. At the very beginning of the movie, the seal of approval from the Comics Code Authority appears. This seal used to be displayed on the covers of comic books that were deemed wholesome, or in other words, suitable for most audiences. 
It stopped being used in 2001, so its use here is a lovely throwback to decades of Spidey comic books. Number 40. Marvel's big one above all, Stan Lee appears in this movie three times. The first time in this scene in the store where he tells Miles that the costume always fits, but he's also one of the people to step over Miles and Peter B after their initial police chase, and he's in the train car at the end of the movie. Number 41. Lee's appearance in Spider-Verse is his first posthumous one, following his death in November of 2018. As such, he and the co-creator Steve Ditko, who'd also died five months earlier, are honoured in a mid credit slate thanking them for telling us we're not the only ones. The meaning of life. Let's talk Spidey suits. When Miles and co visit Aunt May and go down into the spider shed, a number of spidey suits are displayed. Most notably, there's the advanced suit from the PS4 spidey game, the iron spider suit, the classic spidey suit, super stealth suit, mark II armor suit, they're basically all there. Number 43. Remember that guy Brian Michael Bendis I mentioned earlier? Well, as you can see here, his name features on a shop front in NYC. It's a store used for something, it's either books or boots, and books will make more sense, but it looks like boots, so maybe it's an in-joke? I don't know. Number 44. A few seconds later, you can see a restaurant called Romita Ramen. John Romita Sr. and John Romita Jr. are two of the most influential webhead artists in Spider-Man's history. They created a lot of the characters that appear in Spider-Verse, including Kingpin himself, Wilson Fisk. They also have a neon sign in Times Square. Number 45. In Uncle Aaron's apartment here, in this scene, you can see a black version of a traditional Chinese waving cat, which is a likely nice little nod to Black Cat, Spider Peter's lady friend, who has the power of bad luck. Number 46. When Miles is off for his first day at Brooklyn Visions, his suitcase has a Puerto Rica flag on it. Puerto Rica? This is to reflect Miles' half Puerto Rican heritage, as his mother, Rio Morales, is Puerto Rican. Number 47. Let's bash out a few more at once, shall we? When Peter B crash lands into Miles' universe, Times Square is crammed with references. You've got Stephen Curry, NBA legend, sponsored by Red X, parody of FedEx, a billboard with the movie Baby Shower, which is clearly a parody of the 2011 movie Bridesmaids. Number 48. On the next block, you can see an ad for Peekaboo, which is a Snapchat parallel, Coca Soda, which is the Marvel equivalent of Coca Cola, One for Hi Hello, a parody of the Broadway show Oh Hello, which coincidentally starred John Mulaney, the voice of Spider Ham. Number 49. The eagle eyed among you may have also noticed an advert from Dust Till Sean, which is a kind of parody of the Edgar Wright classic film Shaun of the Dead, starring Simon Peck and Nick Frost. But it was actually the title of the written but never made sequel to the movie, which would have featured vampires. Number 50. Just a couple more ads, okay, in this scene, yeah? Good. Alright. There's Mr. Tomato Head, who is now a gender-neutral tomato person. Kitten Heels the Musical, better known in our universe as Kinky Boots. And yes, Seth Rogen is advertising yet another movie where he gets high. We get it, dude, you like weed. Oh, and there's Planet Inglewood, a play on Planet Hollywood and the Red Man Group, who are normally known as the Green Man Group. Right? It's the Green Man Group? Number 51. With such a cool movie, of course, comes a cool, fresh, and dare I say, hip soundtrack, which included artists like Jaden Smith, Lil Wayne, Black Way, and Black Caviar, and others I've absolutely heard of. Number 52. Even New Face of Pokemon Post Malone did a song specifically for the movie called Sunflower, even though I'm not sure the movie features a single sunflower. You could say the song was popular given the fact that in America alone it had 10 million downloads and went diamond. Number 53. The OST was incredibly well received, with Up Rocks' hip-hop editor Aaron Williams calling it exactly what black superhero music should be, reflecting the lead character perfectly. Number 54. Something else incredible about this movie, it's an Academy Award winner. That's right, it won Best Animated Feature at the 91st Academy, Academy Awards the following year. Disney Pixar hadn't lost that Oscar in over seven years, but along came a spider. Verse. Number 55. But that ain't all its accolades. It won over 40 awards in total, including BAFTAs and Golden Globes for Best Animated Feature. In fact, that accolade appears a lot, because it, well, was the Best Animated Feature. Number 56. And much like many popular things that win awards and make hella cash money, there's spin-offs and sequels incoming. A fully-fledged sequel is said to be released in 2022, but there are also rumours of a fully female Spider team having their own movie too, called Spider Women. Number 57. Miles could also appear on the small screen too. In 2019, Phil Lord and Chris Miller, the writers of Into the Spider-Verse, signed a deal with Sony to develop a Marvel TV universe. And since the only things that Sony own that are Marvel related are Spidey adjacent, there's a good chance Miles could be on his way to a Wii screen near you. Number 58. The cast in this movie is also pretty frickin' sweet. Shameek Moore voices Miles himself and even won a Black Reel award for it. You've got Jake Johnson, also known as Nick from New Girl as Peter B, and Hayley Steinfeld, who's been in loads of things before, but is also set to play the lead in Disney Plus's Hawkeye, voicing Spider-Gwen. Number 59. 
And to that, Nicholas the Bees! Cage voicing Spider Noir, John Mulaney voicing Spider Ham, Mahershala Ali as Miles' dad Jefferson, Lily Tomlin as Aunt May, and Chris Pine voicing the original Peter A. Parker. I mean, that's a pretty solid cast, right? Number 60. And of course, how could we talk about Spider-Verse without talking about one of the best albums of all time? A Very Spidey Christmas. Remember at the beginning of the movie in this scene, Peter A. Parker talks about releasing a Christmas album? Well, they only went and did it. Number 61. Yep, Shamik Moore, Chris Pine and Jake Johnson each lent their Spidey voices to a Christmas track, and the album closes with the spoken word track of The Night Before Christmas, spoken by Jorma Tacone, who's not only one third of The Lonely Island, but also voices Green Goblin in Spider-Verse. Number 62. But hey, enough of the multiverse for now. Miles has also appeared in video games, the most prominent of which we're going to speak about right now, as Miles is a playable character in 2018 Spider-Man for the PlayStation. Number 63. I say a playable character, and it's technically true, but the rub is he hasn't got his powers yet, so he's a bit boring. But this game does in fact show his origin story, and it's pretty similar, except Peter is still alive. Nintendo 64. Oh, and another difference. This time, that pesky, bitey spider came from Mary Jane's bag, not his Uncle Aaron's. They really do get in the craziest of places, huh? Number 65. Miles in this game is played by Naji Jeter, who voiced him in the Spider-Man cartoon starting in 2017. Jeter also voices Miles in the game Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 The Black Order, so this guy really knows his onions, Miles-wise. Number 66. We don't see too much of Miles in the game as it's a Peter Spidey-centric story, but we do get a few nice stealthy sections where you can play as Miles, evading enemies and solving puzzles. Number 67. One such section comes as Miles' father Jefferson Davis is killed while accepting an award at City Hall from Mayor Norman Osborn. This breaks away from Miles' comic book storyline as canonically in the Earth 1610 universe, his mother Rio dies as does his uncle Aaron, creating resentment between his father and son when Miles reveals his secret identity. Number 68. Miles reveals his powers to Peter in a mid credit scene after Peter confuses Miles' concerns about his changing body with a different kind of body change. So both lads jump onto the ceiling, revealing their secret powers to each other. Number 69. Venom Shark. Fast forward two years in real life, and just one in the game world, and we arrive at Spider-Man Miles Morales. Developed once again by Insomniac Games and published by Sony Interactive Entertainment for the PS4 and PS5. Number 70. The game was a launch day release on the PS5, which really was reason enough to get it, if you could actually get your mitts on the elusive console. It was also released on the PS4, but with some downgraded graphics, but hey, you also don't have to shell out hundreds of dollars on a console just to play it, so... Number 71. Naji Jita returns as Miles, however, one character was very controversially recast and given a whole new face. Yep, our beloved Peter Parker has a different face capture model called Ben Jordan, who apparently looks more similar to Pete's voice actor, Yuri Lowenthal. He also looks very similar to Tom Holland. Number 72. Somewhat fortunately, as the title suggests, the game doesn't feature Peter all that much anyway, as at the beginning of the game he tells Miles he's headed off to Europe to photograph for an article that MJ's writing, so after his first mission, Miles is flying solo, baby. Number 73. But yes, back to Miles as the video's about him after all. The game follows Miles' struggle to balance his superhero life and his normal life, especially when those buttholes over at Roxxon rocks up and cause issues that make a new villain called the Tinkerer get all hostile. I'd struggle as well, to be fair, Miles. Number 74. The game also really explores Miles' powers, particularly his venom powers and invisibility. Whilst they're briefly explored in Spider-Verse, the game really gives attention to Miles' venom attacks, which incorporate bioelectrokinesis to electrocute enemies, albeit non-fatally. Number 75. Whilst Miles isn't exactly a sequel to Spidey 2018, it's not exactly a DLC either. It's more of a standalone, smaller expansion, if you like. It's often compared to what Uncharted The Lost Legacy is to the Uncharted series, and I like that analogy, and I like those games, which, by the way, we did cover in another video, so... Number 76. One of the main complaints about the game, apart from Peter's passing face-off, was that it was too short. With an 8-10 to 10 hour main campaign, it's around half the length of its 2018 predecessor. But you know what they say, always leave them wanting more. And you can play New Game Plus. Number 77. So let's talk about this tinkerer, and we're getting into spoilers here for the game if you haven't played it yet. Unlike the comic book counterpart in the game, she's not an old man called Phineas, but she is, a she, and a genius engineer, who can make awesome gadgets and weapons using ordinary materials, and her name is Finn. Number 78. Finn also has a brother called Rick who dies before the events of the game, whereas in the comics, Phineas has a son called Rick, who doubles up as someone called The Agent, as interpreted here by stock footage, who in the MCU will feature in the Black Widow movie. They won't be linked to different universes. Same name, different story. Number 79. 
Speaking of alternate universes and storylines, Simon Krieger, the man responsible for Insomniac Rick's death and the head honcho of Roxxon, was actually a nemesis of Iron Man in the comics. He's also voiced by game icon Troy Baker, also known as Joel from The Last of Us and loads of other things, basically every game you've ever played. Number 80. Unlike Spider-Verse, Ganky Lee features much more in the Miles Morales game, most likely because it's more difficult to confuse the Spidey Holland's Ned with the video game. Ganky not only develops the friendly Spidey app, but also works as the man in the chair, hacking for Miles as he adventures and also helps design and develop his spider gear. Number 81. Much like in the comics and Into the Spider-Verse, Uncle Aaron appears in this game and reveals himself to be the Prowler. Dun dun dun. His costume isn't great for a cat burglar, is it? Because it would stand out any anyway. But in the game, he's initially supportive of Spider-Miles and gives him a swish suit if you complete all his challenges. Look how pretty. Ooh. Number 82. There's also a nifty little easter egg before this reveal when you see Miles and Rio's new apartment. Amongst all his father's old case files, there's a file on the Prowler to which Miles says, I wonder if Dad ever caught the guy. Ah, oh, Miles, you sweet summer child. Number 83. Similarly to the first game, there's a buttload of side missions like the Aaron ones. But first of all, let's talk about the incredible interface of the friendly neighbourhood Spider-Man mobile app. This is a new and sleeker way of finding the side quests, and you can use your touchpad to access it. Oh yeah, next gen. Number 84. One of these side quests is rescuing a cat called Spider-Man. Yep, at Tio's bodega, Tio has a cat called Spider-Man who's stolen and you have to go and find him. Trust me, it's worth it, because if you do and then you start a new game plus, a new suit will unlock that has an adorable furry sidekick in the backpack to accompany you on your adventures across NYC and help out with takedowns. Number 85. If you finish all of these app quests, you'll get a message that reads, we got you a gift, come and get it. And under an incredibly cool Black Lives Matter mural, you'll receive a postcard saying thank you and the black and gold Uptown Pride suit, which symbolises the movement. Number 86. If you were a fan of that Spider-Verse movie we mentioned earlier, you'll be pleased to know you can unlock Miles' Spider-Verse suit in the game. You can even equip a suit mod that makes the game world mimic the comic book style that the movie does. Number 87. There's also a reference to everyone's favourite porcine arachnid character Spider-Ham. During J. Jonah Jameson's broadcast called Disappointed Parent, he says, Where will it all end? Spider-Woman? Spider-Punk? Spider-Pig? Ah, oh, if only Jameson knew. Number 88. There's also an extremely sneaky reference to Freddy and Jason from the horror movies Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the 13th on the intercom outside of Miles' apartment. It's even labelled 13F and has blood spatters on it. Number 89. In that same list of tenants, you'll see Waldo, a reference to Where's Waldo, one apartment labelled Andy and Bars as a reference to Toy Story, and there's a lovely yellow sticker that reads Cthulhu lives here, with an adorable drawing of a demon too, referring to H.P. Lovecraft's Cthulhu. Number 90. You can also find a time capsule on top of a train in which there will be a Wakandan flag, which of course refers to Black Panther. There's also a street that was previously named 42nd Street between 1st and 3rd Avenue that's been renamed Bozeman Way to honour Chadwick Bozeman. Number 91. Bozeman, who played T'Challa and Black Panther in the MCU before his tragic death caused by colon cancer, is also honoured at the end of the game in a slate that reads, In loving memory of a noble king, his honour, strength and compassion will reverberate for generations to come. Wakanda forever. Number 92. Once we're on the topic of tributes to Marvel icons, this game of course features a tribute to Stan Lee. After his cameo in Spider-Man 2018 as Mick, if you return to Mick's diner in Miles Morales, there will be a statue of him outside, with a plaque that reads, Dedicated with love to the man who nourished the hearts, minds and souls of true believers everywhere. Excelsior. Who's cutting the damn onions in here? Number 93. On a more fictional level, you can visit the grave and memorial of Miles' father Jefferson. Going to his grave will earn you the trophy Never Give Up. It's in the same graveyard where you also visit Aunt May and Uncle Ben. No achievement for that one though. Number 94. During a flashback scene where Finn and Miles go to see their science project at the Oscorp Science Centre, you'll bump into Peter Parker visiting with his then mentor Dr. Otto Octavius. If you follow them around, Peter eventually makes an excuse to leave Doc, secretly going about his spidey business. Number 95. When Miles is in his bedroom during the mission La Noche Buena, on his bedside table you can see he has a copy of the Amazing Fantasy comic book, which was the first ever appearance of Spider-Man in Marvel Comics. Number 96. There are also a couple references to Spider-Man game publisher Insomniac. First, the Insomniac Games office building you can visit in Midtown, and the second is during the first mission when Miles is riding Rhino through the mall. As Rhino leaps from the ground to the first floor, you go past the Insomniac logo hanging from the ceiling. Number 97. In the mission Tinker Tailor Spy to Spy, where Miles and Finn have to escape capture by Roxxon, there's a computer showing personnel files for some Roxxon contract agents that you might recognise. The first is a cat burglar who's of course Black Cat, the second labelled leader of a biker gang is Tombstone, and the final one, who's slightly more mysterious, will later be revealed as the Prowler. 
Yep, Uncle Aaron's been a bad boy. Number 98. If you want to recreate the badass Miles Leap from the end of the Spider-Verse, as seen in this scene here, you'll be pleased to know that amongst all of the awesome tricks you can do while zip-zopping through the skies of NYC, you can do that exact laying down pose. Number 99. Much like the 2018 Spider-Man game, Spidey can interact with pedestrians. Miles is a billion times cooler with people though. If you press square, he'll shoot finger guns with little sparkles of his bioelectricity. And if you press it again, Miles will start dancing the salsa, which is a billion times cooler than that Tobey Maguire one. Oh. Number 100, oh yeah. One last reference can be found on a pair of tickets in a time capsule. The concert is for Dazzler and Lila Cheney, who are musicians and mutants in the Marvel comics. Dazzler, a member of the X-Men, has the powers of sound conversion and blinding light projection, pretty useless really, whilst Lila has the power of intergalactic transportation. <laughs> That's so much better. Ooh, number 101, okay then yeah, sure, if you're going for one. The post credit scene in Morales is an extension of the one in 2018 Spider-Man. It introduces Harry Osborn in stasis and also suggests that the next game will revolve around him and the black venom that appears surrounding him. In this cutscene though, it's revealed that the scientist working on him is Kurt, also known as Kurt Connors, aka, AKA Lizard. Old Queenie is coming. So those were 101 facts about Spider-Man Miles Morales. Now what do you think? Do you prefer him to Peter Parker? Let me know in the comments down below. While you're down there, why not give us a like and subscribe because we're nearly at 600,000 and it would be great to have you on board as one of those 600,000. We really would appreciate it. In the meantime though, well blow me down. Look at these videos on screen for you now. They're really going to wet that whistle of yours. Why not click on one and uh, see what I mean, okay? And I'll see you there. Goodbye.